As we saw in the previous tutorial, the shape of the distribution can affect which measure of central tendency is the best to describe the center of our distribution. In an example we saw a couple of tutorials ago, we had a roughly symmetric distribution and it had only one mode. In other words, there was only one observation which had the highest frequency or highest number of observations. In this case, we can call this unimodal. With uni meaning one, one mode. It's also symmetric, so there's roughly an equal amount of observations to the right of the mode as there is to the left of the mode, and they occur in about equal frequencies. It's also symmetric. And in this case, when we have a distribution that is unimodal and symmetric, all three of the measures of central tendency are good descriptions of the center of our data. Mean, median, and mode are all very good measures. And they all happen to be roughly equal when you have a distribution that is unimodal and symmetric. However, as we also saw, you can have a distribution that has two clear peaks or modes. So let's say that we have two values which have an equal number of frequencies. Remember, frequency is on the y-axis here, and the actual value is on the x-axis. So if we have two modes that are the same, the mode is not a good measure of central tendency. However, in this case, the mean and the median would be better measures of central tendency. And you'd have to use the actual shape of the distribution to guess which one would be the best. The reason for that is because the distribution can also have what's called skew. It can be skewed to the right or it can be skewed to the left. As we saw in the previous tutorial, the presence of an outlier and the presence of a tail going to the right or a tail going to the left can dramatically influence your mean. So in this case, we have a tail of values going to the right here and some outliers to the right as well, we can call that a right-skewed distribution. And in this case, since the outliers and the skew affect our value of the mean, the mean is not a good measure of central tendency. However, the median is a good measure, relatively speaking, because it's not as influenced by the presence of outliers. And this is particularly prominent in distributions that have a floor effect, where you can't go below a certain number, let's say zero. And you can see this in cases like income or reaction time, where you can't have a negative income and you can't have a negative reaction time. Maybe you can't have a negative income, but I haven't seen it yet. So in this case, the mean would be drawn more towards these outliers and would be about right there, because again, it's balancing the mass of this distribution. But the median would be relatively uninfluenced and would still be closer to the center of the actual distribution. And lastly, see that this can also apply to the converse where the distribution can be skewed to the left, where you have a tail extending leftwards. The concept is the same in this case where the mean is going to be more influenced by the presence of a skew, but the median will be relatively uninfluenced and thus will be a better measure of central tendency.